Yeah, Juliet. All right, we're live. I'm uh, Juliet Wade, and I'm the host of Dive into World Building. And today we're talking about teeth. And I can tell that only my ultra, ultra, super favorite people are here because <laughs> I'm afraid to take on this topic. Yeah, against my better <laughs> judgment. Oh, oh my God. God. Well, you know, so so. I think that this is a show where, where we can talk ju about just about anything because all kinds of things have cultural relevance, right? Mm -hmm. Dentistry, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use this loosely. I'm not going to talk about who good dentists are here, right? I, I've even forgotten to label myself here. I'm going to label myself. Now. Um, and, but I mean, we have to talk about why dentistry is a thing and, and, and why it would be relevant to fiction and that kind of thing. Um, so, so let's do that. There we go. There's my label. And now I can look at the chat bar. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, teeth. Um, unless you're dealing with cephalopods, most people have them. <laughs> uh, I still can't type. No uh, you know, even a lot of ty uh, different types of aliens have them. They're mostly under the radar in fiction, really. Right? I mean... Unless you're talking about specifically um, fangs or bad dental technology. Oh, okay. I think. I mean, you Unless fangs, I agree with the fangs. <laughs> yeah. But you don't really talk about dentistry with regard to fangs. No. no. Fangs are yeah. sort of self-cleaning. Yeah. Not that I know why. But <laughs> maybe it's like that thing where vampires cut their hair and then it all grows back. You know, they get cavities, but then it all grows back overnight. There, there are yeah, a couple really vampire funny. movies where they do have them brushing their teeth. Um, <laughs> but, but that is that is in the minority. Yeah. And it's for comedic value, isn't it? It's it's to humanize them. I'll bet. Possibly, think, possibly. The the funny part is they'll have them where they're invisible in the mirror, but they're brushing their teeth anyway. Oh, so like you you kind of just get like the outline of their teeth through like tooth foam, <laughs> like toothpaste <laughs> foam. Oh. Yeah, it's for comedic effect because yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. watch myself brush my teeth. I just really? yeah, no, most of the time no. Oh, I actually do do that. In the well, I do. I mean, if I'm near a mirror, I'll watch. Yeah. But if I'm not near a mirror, I don't care. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know how to brush my teeth by feel. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, but there's, okay. So let's talk about ways people brush their teeth. Cause I mean, th this is, this is useful and, and you don't always have times um, when you're going to be emphasizing tooth care in a story, right? Mm -hmm. right. But sometimes you have somebody getting up in the morning or, or this, that, and the other. And, and so what's going to happen, right? Well, some, some places in the world, people chew on sticks to clean their teeth. Mm -hmm. There's there's a couple movies I, I have to mention. There was one where um, <laughs> this woman goes through a, a door in her attic and ends up in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> um, and they accept her, the family accepts her as a guest. And there's like, oh, and here's your dental care. And it was like birch twigs or something and like something else and it was like nothing recognizable and she's just sitting there staring at them going i don't know what to do with these <laughs> oh, yeah, right? because it's like you, you know what do you do with it i would not know i i would not know what to do with them sure well i mean um, yeah and, and in fact the difference between the tools it, it, things get standardized over time right yeah mm -hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, so we get very used to our little plastic toothbrushes, but, you yeah. know, but things are now so. moving towards less plastic, too. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we have plastic toothbrushes and electric toothbrushes and water picks and, you know. Yeah. Well, I think to buy toothpaste and how many choices do you have for toothpaste? You have. Oh, my gosh. A gazillion choices for toothpaste. And we haven't talked about floss yet. I'm. Yes. I, I Say that There's before that the plastic toothbrush, I think they were wooden and had boar bristles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And then just like hairbrushes, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And then the the second thing I want to mention is if you ever watched um oh man, Farscape. Farscape. Um mm. the the Earth guy Crichton is like trying to like brush his teeth and they're like no 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 that device is completely primitive here and they hand him a a grub this huge <laughs> worm grub and they shove it in his mouth and that's what cleans their teeth like super thoroughly like everybody because they're like your primitive device isn't cutting it we want you and they were called like dentins or something right well i mean it's so, it's, it's, it's based on the the hippos and the birds, right? I mean, that kind yeah. of thing, right? The yeah. idea that there would be an animal that would be interested in eating the bacteria off your teeth is not, I mean, it's not inconceivable, yeah. that right? No, but true. it's like, I've never seen anyone actually do that before. And so it was, it was interesting. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, well done, no Farscape. <laughs> Farscape. Farscape is uh, pretty cool. I don't remember the grub, though. Um, we're, now, we're now thoroughly appalled, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, well, but, that okay, scene so, so burned itself. In. Got a, I've got a, uh, I got a grub, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's what, a, a, how different is that really from putting a collection of, of nanobots in your mouth to do the same thing? Okay, it's, they it's a grub. An it's kind of gross. Yeah, I'm but sorry. <laughs> no, the grub, the big, gross, disgusting, and having it move around in your mouth. I mean, come on, like the nanobots. I, mean, yeah, I think I think part of it is part of it is a deliberate gross out factor of stuff. Oh yeah, grub. totally. That's yeah. true. That's Farscape. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, it's plausible and yet gross, which I think serves yeah. them very well. Yeah. And it's funny because a, a, something like a, a grub or, you know, a specialized mm -hmm. use of a plant or an animal is more, I think you're more likely to find in fantasy where in science fiction, I think you'd be more, ex expect more nanobots. Mm, well, yeah, I mean, there is a, a lean toward the machine sort of thing going on in science fiction, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. That's true. Okay, so, so, um, okay. Um, I think that it's important to talk about the value placed on teeth. Um, I, you know, I have put a lot, <laughs> my teeth are a huge investment. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, what's funny is I think that's probably true for, for quite a few people as long as they can make the investment. But what's, what's interesting is, you have this factor that if you want to have good teeth, you do have to invest quite a bit of money in it, right? I've seen several articles going around about um, how it's inappropriate to joke about people who have bad teeth because that's actually a sign of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I agree, and I agree that that's not appropriate. Um, it's also... Um, Tooth health is so important. I mean, have you guys ever had a toothache? Luckily, no. Yes. Oh my gosh. Root canal. Yeah. Toothaches, cavities. It's, I mean, gums. Ow. Gums. <laughs> I can't. It's hard to describe how much it hurts, really. And yeah. orthodonture. Yeah. Is, is another thing that yep. you know, is is actually kind of important. It's not just cosmetic. Oh, right. It's, it's not always cosmetic. Um, um, yes. Um, orthodontia can be related to, her, to tooth health. Yeah. Yeah, because if you've got... And it, the wisdom teeth, which sometimes have to come out. And yeah. Sometimes you can get away with it. And the wisdom tooth removal and the orthodontia have to be done in the, in the right order. Mm -hmm. Or one of them is sort of pointless. Um, right, right. Anchor because they serve as anchors in a way, and and it, it's actually very, very complex. Very complex. Mm -hmm. um, I have teeth that overlap because they took my retainer out before they took my wisdom teeth out, so mm. you know, sort of got smooshed in a way that they wouldn't have. Mm. <laughs> Spent years in braces so that they would. Uh. 
Yeah. They missed it. Well, you know, my but, mom um, had her braces removed um, because my her family was moving and they couldn't afford to keep her in the braces. And of course her teeth then moved. And then she did braces again when she was 50. Right. Because she just really wanted to finish the job properly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I, but I mean, so there is luxury in not having to think about your teeth. Yeah. Right. It's, because medical insurance and, and medical, medical care for the public good, for the general good, Mm -hmm. you know, provided for the individual yeah. is a big, huge thing, and dental care is not. Right. No. Dental care and is actually, not included in medical they're... care, which is just ridiculous because of, the, the, it is, it's bacteria, they get in your teeth and they spread. Right. And... But I will, I will mention that there have been public health measures taken to, to, to promote tooth health, or at least I would say one public measure taken to promote public tooth health, and that is fluoridation of tap water. Right. Mm -hmm. And my dentist talks about that as being a life-changing moment for dentists. Hmm. Hmm. That, in fact, it's made an enormous difference in general tooth health to fluoridate yeah. The water, much as many people, much as there are groups of people who 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 claim that that fluoridation is this terrible, terrible thing and and whatever, but in fact it has um, <clears throat> promoted tooth health as a public as a public health issue, um, and it has made a difference, which I think is really fascinating. Um, I actually, what's funny is, um, you know, when I'm working in my fictional world, I don't, there are certain things that I don't want to have to worry about because I don't want to have to have them intrude into the story. And tooth health is one of them. And I'm like, okay, fine. I've got these poor people and they have fine teeth that they don't have to think about. Okay, the government fluoridated the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I, it's, I mean, it's one of those it's one of those sort of often neglected like it does not show up in fiction very often um yeah, but it's it you know and when it does show up in fiction it does it have it seems to show up with you know with the poor person on the street that you meet or you know it doesn't happen to the main characters but, well right? no because it, it's considered it's unattractive right right why would you have missing to be unattractive um, right, exactly, right. You know, so nobody's got like gray rotting teeth or um, anything. I there, there's a couple things I think only where like dental stuff has shown up, and it's been in movies. Yeah, um, are like the only examples I can think of where where a tooth problem has become a plot point. Yeah, there was. Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember where? Yeah, um, Castaway, which took me three times to spell properly in the chat bar. <laughs> uh, where, you know, Tom Hanks has that has that tooth that gets like progressively worse and then sort of like two thirds or halfway through, he finally has to like devise a way to knock the tooth out ah. um, himself. And he rigs up this thing with like, um, um, it was a, it was a, it was a, an ice skate um, that like he rigged up to like knock him in, and knock that tooth out. Um, and then there was um, an, a Nick Nolte, really depressing Nick Nolte film, which I think was called Affliction, where um, he plays like this small town sheriff with an alcoholic father, and um, he has a toothache throughout the entire film and then eventually i think at, at the end again just it takes it out himself um and i think these things are, are sort of like metaphor i think in in the tom hey i think well in affliction i think it was a metaphor in in castaway i think it was just a plot point where you know he's alone I think on it was the based island. on a true story right i don't know if it was castaway real Oh, you know what? You know the other place where teeth were a thing was Dances with Wolves. Much as that story has many problems. Huh, I do not remember that. 
but it's a four hour film. So, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's the, you know, the wolves disappeared and then the guy, his friend shows up with new teeth. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I always thought that was kind of an awful moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were many awful things about the film. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I kind of still like I really liked it, but Yeah, I, I mean, liked I, it at the time, but now that yeah, I think back on it, I'm like, really? Really? Do I, I, I do yeah. kind of remember wondering why um the white lady he falls in love with had to be a white lady, though. And that was like back in high school <laughs> before I knew anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I well, have a, a doctor we chip Shepard away at the Center. edifice, don't we? <laughs> yeah, there was. A, I'm trying to remember if I'm right about this. There was a Doctor Who episode, I think, that um, a while back, where they they met Shakespeare, um, who mm -hmm. is apparently a terrible flirt, who goes to kiss Martha Jones, I think, is the companion, if I'm remembering this correctly, and she sort of pulls away because his breath is horrible. Which, of course, okay. is related Who is to Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare. Right. Which, yeah. of course, is meant to be related, is related to um, dental health. Mm -hmm. Or is, is... Well, um, I mean, talk about, talk about protagonists and good people with bad teeth. George Washington. Mm. Yeah. Right? George Washington, at a certain point in his life, had only one of his own teeth left, or like two. Wow. And he had dentures, basically, um, made out of hippo teeth, I think, and wood. Oh. I mean, it must have been terribly painful to be George Washington, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say they probably weren't fitted to your gums very well. No, and, and you know, and, and there he is trying to, trying to lead his life. It's no wonder he never smiles for his portraits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, why would you? Why would you? Um, but I mean, that's an interesting impact, right? Mm -hmm. um, I I remember um, watching a documentary about like medieval Europe, and one of the historians um, said something about how like people's teeth were actually not too bad mm. until the discovery of sugar. Uh, yeah, they were not as bad until sugar started being refined. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then once there was like, once they discovered sugar and started importing it, um, you know, manufacturing it and bringing, bringing it in and putting it into confectioner confections and sweets and things, um, that really, really started rotting their teeth. Yeah, seriously. Actually, I was going to say, also, there's a reference to teeth. Um, Gollum talks about how many teeth he has. Um, oh, nice. I did not, I don't remember that, yeah. He says he has, like, four or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of other places where I've seen teeth get mentioned. I mean, that. so, Morgan, you're saying dentistry is one of the oldest medical professions dating back to 7,000 B.C.? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I, I just Googled that. It came off the American Dental Education Association site. Wow. Um, and I just yeah, I mean, gave that I'd imagine look. people have had to deal with teeth as long as there have been people, you know. Um, yeah. Tooth cracks or gets infected or something. Somebody has got to. Well, you know, there's, there's yeah, evidence in the fossil record that people started getting cavities. Cavities started being a thing. Um, at a certain point in our hominid evolution, right? Like there's, you know, there's, you can identify the point when dental caries is what they're called, um, wow. start being a thing, <laughs> right? So are we the only species that gets cavities? No. Or? no. Okay, no. I was gonna say, yeah. Okay. But you can no. identify when they became a, a, a phenomenon in hominid species ah. um, in the fossil record, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cats and, Cats dogs, and dogs get harder get, problems. Yeah, I mean, anything with teeth, I'm sure can have, <laughs> I can have problems with them. It would yeah. be interesting to see where in the history of domestication um, and being fed by human beings, um, hmm. cats and dogs yeah. are developing um, cavity issues. Well, and then you've got also, you've got um, different kinds of teeth, like rodent teeth, which just 
constantly have to be worn down because they're constantly growing because because they're so busy with their teeth that they would wear them right out and then they wouldn't have any teeth anymore and they would die. Right? Yeah. And horse I mean, teeth. That, that would be an interesting, you could use that in fantasy or science fiction as a species. Like, yeah. Like a perfectly intelligent, like sort of rodent species and their, their teeth just grow all the time. So they're just constantly gnawing on like <clears throat> chunks of wood or something. You know, while they're, you know, conducting business. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so it, that would it could be funny. It, it could it could very much just be a thing, but um yeah, like yeah, it's I, I think it's funny because I'm I'm not sure. Like I know there have been like people thrown in like, you know, rat, um like intelligent rats and mice and things, but I yeah. don't know if they've ever included the teeth part. They might, um, yeah. Not that I've seen. Interesting, because that um, kind of should be a thing. But yeah, it it should. I mean, you look at any anything. Well, I mean, chinchillas aren't actually rodents. Um, no, there's something else. I think I've lost I, track of which rodent like things yeah. are, are not rodents. There are but, a lot of rodents I mean, out there, though. Rodents Beals. and hamsters and dribbles and guinea pigs, I think, will all just chew constantly. You put cardboard in blocks of, of wood in, in the cages um, because otherwise they will chew on the cages which is yeah. either bad for the cage or bad for them or both um, mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and if it's bad for the yeah. cage and they get out then you find everything else being chewed on like in furniture and <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah oh and also you know what we haven't talked about teething Oh, right. Different Which... sets of teeth. Mm -hmm. um, just the, It's worth noticing that they exist because they do affect dentistry, right? The way that mm -hmm. people perform dentistry on, on children who are on their deciduous teeth is different from the way that they do it on adults. Yeah. Um, Which means they probably had... I mean, Egyptians. Um. They're, they're, you know, much quicker to pull them out, <laughs> you know. Um. <clears throat> now, if you ever go and you look at the way that dentist chairs and equipment looked um, back in, like, the 1800s or the 1700s, it's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> like, they looked totally like torture devices. They are torture <laughs> devices. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's yeah. A, there's a there was a young adult uh, book I read by Cat Winters called "The Cure for Dreaming," and the main character's father is a dentist, and it's in like eighteen, not nineteen, closer to the turn of the century, because the suffragist movement um, is featured throughout. Okay. And, um, but. Um, but yeah, no, like everybody is terrified of her father and he's like this horrible, horrible person. Uh, and, and, and he's like, he like just sort of threatens people with dentistry. Oh, oh, oh dear. Well, I mean, yeah, there are kind of evil dentists that feature in <laughs> different things like Little Shop of Horrors, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's almost like a trope. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> but I think, honestly, it's hard to be a dentist, right? Because your job is to cause people pain in some, in some level, and you have to be very careful about how you manage that. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, well, there I are so many different aspects of the teeth, too. There's, like, there's like endodontists endodontists who do things like root canals and and you've got what crowns and all this kind of stuff i mean you've got characters show up with gold teeth sometimes in fiction mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. which means there has to be the technology to do that <clears throat> well you have to have the dental yeah um well, I mean, how much? What kind of technology do you need? Obviously, you don't need a great big dental suite to do that, or people wouldn't have had gold teeth for 
uh, however many years. It's been going on for a long time, the gold teeth thing. Yeah. So you don't need a, a, a huge fancy dental suite. You just need a huge a fancy gold dental and suite. somebody who can put their <laughs> put gold on your teeth. Um, I, um, I yes, think dentists were a... also barbers. Yes, yes, yes. This yeah, rings yeah. a bell. I think part of the problem that have, dentists might have is that people put off putting going to the dentist. They don't. Uh -huh. uh, they don't go and get their teeth cleaned, the preventive yeah. care. Uh, so by the time you actually go to um, your dentist, you're already in pain, and yeah. it's that much harder for them to get the the teeth fixed without. Well, yeah, you know, so actually there was this really interesting yeah. cultural thing that I discovered, the diff uh, you know, a difference between American um, middle class values and Japanese middle class values, I guess you'd say. The Japanese um, culture puts a lot less emphasis on tooth care, mm. right? Um, I was told when I went to Japan, if you have a cavity, wait a year and come back to the United States. <gasps> Yeah, it was, I was like, okay. Oh my God. Um, now things have probably changed somewhat because that was now some years ago. Um, but there's just not as much of a value placed on preventive care for teeth. Mm. And, you know, I remember when I was, this was in 1991, I was living with a host family and my host mom, didn't have very good teeth. Um, uh, and she was, one of her teeth was, you know, giving her some pain. Um, so she went into the dentist and he <laughs> and came back and I said, you know, what happened? And she said, well, he said, wait a while. If it doesn't go away, we'll pull it out for you. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Oh my God, like that's it? Oh my God. I was like, holy cow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but. But I've also, what's, you know, um, I've also um, seen Japanese people who live here who, who much prefer the Japanese approach to it, right? Because they, they the, one of my friends felt like we were always in the dentist's office, right? Mm. And, 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 and it was almost like, it was almost like the attitude um, that you see when somebody goes to the mechanic. And it's like, the mechanic's just making up problems because they want your money. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> right. Well, you know, like, yeah, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have had all these problems if I hadn't gone to the dentist. You know, <laughs> you know like. No, um, no, you just wouldn't know. <laughs> I, I yeah, think well, I mean, so that's my view, right? That you had all these issues and your teeth needed this, that, or the other, and you just didn't know about it. Um but it was interesting because I was talking about that with this friend of mine and she was really like, just like, oh, you know, they're, they're going to, they're trying to rip you off kind of thing. Um, you know, and if, and you don't need to take care of all this stuff. I was like, mm. uh, well, I, <laughs> I mean, I've grown up here, right? It, it, um, it makes sense to me that I yeah. do it the way we do it, but yeah. There's, I just put a link in, there was, um, there was, I remember hearing about this and I was kind of like, huh? But apparently it's kind of true. Um, is that in Japan, like a snaggle tooth is kind of considered cute. Mm. Um, so like, oh, yeah, like the one little tooth yeah. sticking out or two little tooth sticking out. So, um, so people, they get like, I don't know, caps or something. You can, you can get like a cute, <laughs> put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, and, and that's pretty normal that there would be that there would be different value placed on different kinds of tooth configurations or this, that, and the other. I mean, after all, when we were kids, tooth whitening was not a thing. No. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah. And then as we're adults, suddenly it's this huge deal, and oh, you want white teeth? I'm like, I don't want white teeth. I don't care about having white. Teeth. I'm. I, I care that they're healthy, and that crap I be able like to use them. messes up your. It can. It can. It's like I would rather they be healthy than white. Yes. Uh, I think uh, there's some 
um, lack of recognition that teeth are not all naturally white, that if your teeth are not white, you must be doing something to them. Like, um, what was it when I was, I don't know, young enough that my mom was still taking me to the dentist, um, which might be good. I just looked at my calendar. I have to call the dentist. Um, <laughs> no, I kid. Uh, the dentist, you know, looked at my teeth, turned to my mom and said, does she drink coffee or smoke? And I, I was in middle school, maybe like, no, I don't do either of those things. Why? It's like, well, my teeth are kind of yellow. Okay. I don't smoke. I don't drink coffee. That's just the color my teeth are. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, well, you know, I mean, that's the thing. It's almost like somebody was looking for a marketing opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. And when they find one, they create this cookie cutter image that everybody then has to conform to, <laughs> right? Oh, and I thought of another instance of teeth showing up in fiction. Mm -hmm. um, mm. The Ferengi sharpen their teeth. <gasps> yes. Oh, ah, yes. And, um, and in fact, Worf, Got, Worf once bought one of Quark's tooth sharpeners. If you <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no way. The yeah. title, I mean, it was hilarious, right? <laughs> yeah. Filing your teeth is, is a sign of, of um, I think there may be actual real societies on. on yes, there are real there societies are where they file patterns into their teeth. Yeah, yeah, but in, in or just file them to points. I mean, you can file them to points as well. The uh -huh. Ferengi have a reputation for being kind of vicious, you know, not physically, but you know, Klingons certainly are are dangerous and yeah, fierce. sharp teeth. And well, I mean, sharp teeth are considered predatory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that... our teeth are sometimes sharp, but they tend to wear down over time. The other yeah. thing that happens. Um, it's not that just that teeth wear down over time, um, but gums retract over time. Mm. You guys know the expression long in the tooth? Yep. That comes from the fact that when you get older, your gums retract and your teeth look longer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um. So that's actually an interesting spot, though, because... It's always useful, and I always think it's useful, to say what kind of evidence of the importance of teeth, for example, since we're talking about teeth today, is in the language. What kinds of expressions mm. refer to dentistry? So, for example, that was so hard, it was like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Or that person is older, they're long in the tooth. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and so it, it's always good to sort of say, where are the, where are the references to teeth in this case in the language? And yeah. And what is pulling the, teeth from chickens? Chickens teeth. Hens teeth. Hens, yeah. Hens, hens teeth. teeth. Yeah. Uh, and facial expressions. I mean, you, you look at smiles and grins and you hear about how, um, you know, they, humans are very strange to show, you know, uh, friend, that they're friendly, they bare their teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, like, is it ooh. polite in society to show your teeth or not? Yeah. yeah. In, uh, in ancient Japan, married women used to blacken their teeth. Hmm. Because having shiny, flashy teeth was considered like sexy, <laughs> and right. you know, so it was ostentatious to flash your teeth at someone. And if you weren't going to go and 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 so once you were married, you you basically colored your teeth black every day. Oh, with what? Do you know, like a dye or? Oh gosh! All right, Something? time for research. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the can of worms. Well, um, teeth black. Um. Is this thing called teeth black? I don't know. I think they they use it like in movies probably because um you know when when like a character when they're doing like the hillbilly jokes, um they'll they'll put something on the tooth to blacken it so it doesn't show up well on camera so you can get like the kind of missing 
teeth, um, you know, without having to, you know, you don't knock out an actor's teeth. You just color it in black. Um, so it doesn't show up. So, yeah. okay. So, um, ha, I found a page on the dye preparation. Mm. Oh, uh, iron filings are soaked in tea or sake and they, and they, and then they went, <laughs> the liquid turns black when the iron oxidizes. And so, and then it tastes terrible. So, they add cinnamon or cloves or anise, and then you drink it, and it causes your teeth to turn black. Oh and you God. have to do it every few days. Oh, God. Huh. Oh. That sounds like something you wouldn't have to drink. You could just swish around and spit out. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows, why. right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah this, was a, that's, this was a cultural practice, and apparently, you know, it was deliberately... Yeah, ohaguro, which basically means Thank honorable you. tooth black. Mm. Ha is tooth, gu guro ah. is, is kuro, kuro is black. Mm -hmm. So, tooth blackening, literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, um, I put in the chat the, um, the Maya. Yeah, you did. Put in jade insets. Um, in, in their teeth and um, <laughs> um yeah they, they did a, they did a lot to transform uh there was a, the nobility of course um to get like a particular aesthetic mm -hmm. um and that was one of the things they did yeah and and, and actually in this article that i that i pulled up about ohaguro um they say that they that when they find bodies from this period, their teeth are still black. <laughs> oh, okay, pretty permanent. No, it's solution. a pretty seriously wow, seriously um, permanent way of dyeing your teeth. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if drinking it had something to do with that. Like maybe if they had just rinsed and spit. I don't know. I, I don't know either. Say. I mean, it's a. It's, huh. I'm scanning. <laughs> ah, the Wikipedia I'm looking at says that it prevented tooth decay in a similar fashion to modern dental sealants. Well, that's possible. Wow. So. It sounds like it would kill stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm also going to say, like, how much sugar yeah, sure. did, did they have, too? Like, because I think, like, sugar really is, like, the number one thing that... That rots your teeth. That rots your teeth, yeah, because it, it feeds the bacteria already mm -hmm. present. And then their yeah. populations explode. And, and, and you know what? Um, tea is, um, tea without sugar and without milk is actually something that suppresses those bacteria. Oh, nice. Yeah. I feel well, even better. <laughs> I like milk in my tea, so I'm a little oh, out of luck. But, I don't put anything in my tea. I just drink it straight. So Yeah, so it probably good. helps your teeth, Che. Yeah. <laughs> I also um, don't eat sugar either. Don't put sugar in your tea if you want. No, no. I mean, I don't, I don't eat any sugar at all. Oh, I see. Anything, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so, um, yes. So I imagine that if you took iron filings and added it to your tea, that would actually be very effective at at um, suppressing any bacterial uh, stuff in your in your mouth. Well, that, I'm sure that, gross. like I wouldn't be interested in doing that because I'm not interested in dyeing my teeth black. No, I, and they said it tastes bad. So why really? Yeah, it? yeah. So <laughs> so no, thank you. Well, I mean, as they are so personal, as, right? Yeah. What? Teeth are personal. Like, I mean, yeah. it's a little bit like what we talked about with hair. Um, it's like whether your teeth are anybody's business is an interesting mm -hmm. question, right? Yeah. It has, I mean, has to do with women being told to smile, with women having to be told, told being told that their teeth have to be a certain way. Um, but you know what? I think they are because they're visible. Um, right. 
they're also, and I think like men and women come under the same judgments for teeth. Though not um, for smiling. Not for smiling, but mm. like for the quality of attractiveness. Like mm. a man will get mocked for having missing teeth. Mm, okay. As much as a woman, I think, will get mocked for having missing teeth. The um, people I have ever seen being mocked for having overly white teeth for spending enormous amounts of money oh. to have their teeth. Well, that's true. That's men. one. Yeah, that's one thing that because it's extraordinary care uh, for their appearance. Yeah, Which there's this. There's a sort of a vanity thing. That. You see that yeah. in like The Simpsons. Yeah, um, vanity okay. associated with with just these bright teeth, right? Mm -hmm. The ha huh, smile and the pee. Well, and then you get like the little the yeah the ting, the little the sound effect, the little the lens flare. <laughs> I know, yeah, on the teeth. Richard, Richard. I mean, Channing. I think that's. I mean, but I think that's actually a, almost like a visual. It's a little bit like um, yeah. semiotics that that Carrie Quinn was talking about, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's like that is a that is a visual symbol of vanity. Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's funny because I've, I've seen it um, in manga, like the, the tooth gleam, like they have that too. Um, yeah. For things. <laughs> Although sometimes it's just like, it's the particular quality <laughs> of the smile. Um, like if you're up to something, you do like a big <laughs> smile, you get like the tooth gleam. Um, well, you know, tooth gleam doesn't have to mean the same thing. No, yeah. Right? <laughs> things mean different things across cultures. I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, in Japanese manga it meant one thing and, you mm -hmm. know. And even within one culture, in different contexts, it might have different, you know, yeah. it have different yeah. implications. So, yeah. Because, like, for example, I wonder, I wonder whether there would be any connection between the, the significance of a, of, of a tooth gleam in a in a Japanese manga, and the year one thousand practice of tooth blacking tooth blackening in Japan, like mm. is there any sort of cultural narrative that leads from one to the other? I bet there you could find one, mm. right? Um, Probably. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of there are a lot of teeth in my novella, but there's no dentistry. <laughs> Teeth, showing I mean, your teeth is a big way of communicating displeasure. Yeah. And aggressiveness. Yeah. But it was actually interesting. One of the things that I did for, for the novella was that I went and I looked up how wolves and African wild dogs looked when they were showing their teeth mm. and how, how those were different. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was like, well, when the wolf people show their teeth, it's a sign of aggression or displeasure, right? And they show them like kind of like this, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but when they gape, it's not aggressive when they go, yeah, right. <laughs> but the African wild dog group, they gape when they're when they're aggressive, and what mm -hmm. they do is is they show their teeth in this like you can see the like you can see their whole dental array. <laughs> Yeah, and that's when they're aggressive, right? <laughs> it, but they don't just pull their lips back to show aggression. They actually go "ga," <laughs> and they show yeah. their teeth like that. So, like this kind of stuff is fun, right? I, so I, I don't know. Like, if I were to say, "Okay, let's do something interesting with dentistry in a story," you wouldn't have to necessarily make it the focus. I mean, I could, I could totally see horror stories being being based on teeth. Oh yeah, there's you know, like there's tons there's a of horror movie called the dentist. horror stories and dentists yeah. and all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, because that, because the, because teeth are personal and because tooth pain is exceedingly personal. I mean, it's in your head. <laughs> it's very personal. In your head. Yeah. Uh, well, it's more than that. It's in an orifice, and anything involving an orifice is. Ah. But I also think it's that it's in your head. Like you, you, you can't. Yeah. You know, something in an extremity feels very different from something that's like right in the seat of your consciousness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> so, yeah. It's something you use all the time. It's, it's for eating. It's for communicating. 
yeah you, know, you can you can grit your teeth and still you know hold a conversation with someone if your ankle hurts yeah um but you know having a conversation with someone when your teeth hurt is much much harder it's harder to well, and teeth also shape the sounds you can make yeah yes yeah. it'll interfere yes. with speech if you've got missing teeth you'll lisp um yeah you know like <laughs> if your front teeth are gone or if you or or chalking without your dentures in or something where it's it's the tooth um, fairy oh my yeah, gosh tooth, tooth fairy. fairy she's not a dentist yeah. though <laughs> no the and there's also fairy. the tooth mouse the tooth mouse Oh yeah, in Europe it's not it's not a fairy, it's a mouse. Wow, no did way. Did you ever see Yeah, did you ever see Rise of the Guardians? No. Okay. I did. Go see, go see Rise of the Guardians because But the tooth was like Oh, wait, no because it was like that hummingbird lady from Right, and she had all these little assistants who were hummingbirds and then they were going through the world trying to do stuff and they ran into the tooth mouse. Oh my god! I don't remember the tooth. And mouse. they tried like one of the one of the people tried to accost him, and she's like, "No, no, no! He's from our European team. It's okay." <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, is la petite souris, <laughs> which of course means that that um, that mouse should have been female, but what you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So I think I want one of my stories. I've got um, the 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 um, technology of, of the, the bathroom, the you know toilets and showers and, and tubs, very different from one culture to another. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hadn't included. Um, you know the dental care it's like this is this is you know where you bathe and this is where you wash your hands and you, there's you know indoor toilets and and but I, the uh, person showing them around hadn't didn't say anything about you know this is how you take care of your teeth um, <laughs> but that's something might be worth that, mentioning if you have that kind of a yeah, tour going on yeah yeah um, and i think that the public health care that the the ruling family is um, insistent on should also include dental care. I mean, we should too. But I mean, uh, I think I, I think do that. yes. I think I think <laughs> that having public health without having teeth involved is a mistake. Yeah, because I mean, tooth problems are not, as I said, they're personal, but they're also connected to general health problems. Like tooth bacteria have been found in heart clogs mm -hmm. you know so there is a pretty direct link between heart attacks and and tooth problems which is yeah eye-opening <laughs> um but yeah yeah well so here we are at 11 we did get a late start oh. yeah um a bit but yeah so 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 teeth <laughs> yeah and let yeah, me. And I, I don't. I don't know if you, you saw the what I had to say about alien bacteria because uh, iron. You just to to take it off Earth to the aliens because the you were saying about the iron and the, the bacteria. Yeah. And human teeth. If alien species might have different bacteria that respond differently to to different. Yeah. Substances. They would. That's conceivable. Do they eat iron. What if your teeth bacteria eat iron? Ah, <laughs> awesome. Whoops. Or what if you go to a planet and you have to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's actually something because that, that you do see to, you know, the, our, we can't process those bacteria. We can't raise earth cattle on that planet because the bacteria and the food and whatnot, all that stuff is considered. Well, I mean, you would, to colonize, you would be able but to not... survive if you had bacteria yeah. that were eating iron out of your... Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, out that's of your true. body. Yeah. You know. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, let's see. Next <laughs> week, there are so many things I have on this cool list of things that we can talk about. But let's talk about prosthetics. Okay. These are all the topics that, that Morgan suggested. Oh. <laughs> so Morgan's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, now, now I have to, to go and find my, my uh, thesis. And uh, prosthetic teeth, right? Oh, yeah. So we, def we definitely mentioned that today, but I'm, we're talking about prosthetics of other varieties in this case. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right. So thank you guys. And um, we will talk about prosthetics next week. And I think the week after that, we will have our guest author, uh, Marshall Mar Ryan Maresca. So Marshall Ryan, Marshall Ryan Maresca. And, um, It'll be fun because <laughs> he does a bit of con langing and yeah. Should be oh, fun. yeah. Cool. Yeah. That is going to be the 9th of November. 9th of November. Cool. That's, okay. yeah. That's awesome. fantastic. So for now, we'll stop the podcast and uh, hopefully see you next week.